we've decided to leave the fabulous, astonishingly beautiful area around Pedjor and we've chosen a day where it's pretty windy-ish, very wet, uh, typical tropical weather, you know, one perfect day and then the next it's all grey and like this. Anyway, we've got wind on the nose, there's 15 knots of it and it's only about 12-15 mile passage but the end bit's going to be very interesting. We've got shoals, we've got reefs either side and we're going to have to weave our way through using some waypoints uh, before we can set anchor at Waterfall Bay. So we'll keep you posted. So we're here, but where's the waterfall? Aha! The reason the waterfall isn't here is because we didn't go to Waterfall Bay in the end. As you may have seen earlier, it was a pretty crappy day, overcast, rain, quite a bit of wind, waves, all that stuff that you get when you're in a boat. So as we were going along, we kept seeing some rather interesting bits of land and uh, islands with little nooks and crannies. So we had another look at uh, the charts and we chose to come here instead. It's a village, it's obviously a fishing village because there are uh, fish traps and fish farms all along here. It doesn't have a name, we're not quite sure where it is. We're going to investigate tomorrow, but at the moment we, it's lovely here. It's really very, very pretty, surrounded by mountains, high mountains, loads of jungle and pretty houses. We've had two atrocious days of weather, uh, very heavy rain, thick dark clouds, so it's not been great for videoing, photography, or even jumping in the dinghy exploring. But today we've had a break and uh, it's a little bit overcast still, but we've got blue patches. Um, we've just hopped in the dinghy and we're gonna go ashore to this little village here, which we're anchored up by, which is a, a kind of V-shaped bay with coral reefs all around it. And along one side of the reefs are these fishing stilted, um, I suppose they're fish traps really. Fish, with farms. fish farms maybe, yes, with uh, little sheds on top of some of them. Uh, and they set in among uh, the, uh, and I forgot the name, I found the name yesterday because it wasn't on one of the charts we were using, but this has a name, this bay, it's a straight, uh, very sort of fjord-like. And uh, this village, certainly from the boat, looks quite pretty. So we thought we'd go ashore and uh, have a look. Very shallow around here. The uh, village is almost divided in two halves, a couple of houses um, up to the north and then a few more down to the south of the mosque. But then in the middle they've got this huge great big um, area which is extremely shallow, so shallow in fact that we had to park the dinghy up in the water and tie to a little um, bit of mangrove growth there. And so we're just going to go for a wander behind me. And there is a road 
there is actually a road. Even though one of these islands are very independent, they do seem to be linked somewhat by tracks and uh, pathways. One thing I think quite a few of you may ask of these villages uh, seemingly stuck in the middle of nowhere is where they get their water from. Well, in this village, as we walk past a little clearing heading up into the hills, we can see on the floor a number of plastic pipes and they, they meet the main pathway where I'm standing now and they shoot off in that direction, that direction and a few more to feed the houses in front of us. So there's obviously some kind of natural spring up in the hill which they're feeding from. <laughs> So this is a first. We've never seen this before, I uh, don't think, in the Anambus yet. We see these, we call them long tails of course, that's the, the Thai name for the fishing boats here. But they're all wooden, handmade. Uh, but this is the first time that we've actually seen them being made. And so we've got two guys behind me here who are just currently, they're, they're actually caulking, uh, putting in the waterproofing between the, each wooden slat. And they're using some kind of gum, resin, don't know what it is, no idea, but uh, they're literally using their hands to bead the caulking into each slat. And you can see behind me on this side is the pile of hardwood that they're using. It's a red hardwood, not sure what it is, probably indigenous to the islands, uh, but it's beautiful. It really is a beautiful work of art. So you can see already Liz has managed to pick up three children, one of whom is our guide, Wayne Rooney, I think his name is. And he's very sweetly given Liz uh, a his hibiscus, a very big pink hibis hibiscus as a welcoming present. So unusually for these islands, we're actually over a hill. You can see Esper in the distance over there. And I say unusually because most of these islands, most of these villages, um, like this, all the buildings are on the sea level and they seem to have some kind of walkway along here which isn't finished. Either that or it is some kind of breakwater. But instead, we have ascended a short hill. You can hear how unfit I am by me being out of breath and we've climbed up the hill to get a, uh, a lovely perspective of our anchorage. The boys seem to be taking us somewhere in particular with no idea where. So Wayne Rooney here has been showing me the mango trees which I think they've planted because they seem very, very proud of them in amongst all the coconuts. <coughs> mm. My wristwatch is broken My shoes are untied Time is a ticking And so is the tide But I am not worrying Things are what they are Come rain or come shine Or a shooting star I've been to the south I've been to the north East and the west in the middle of course I may have been astray But I never Yeah. Okay. Yes. Pong pong. Yeah. Pong pong. Yeah, that's what they say. Pong pong. Pong pong. Yeah. Which is the name, of course, of uh, these boats. I forgot the name of them, of course. They're called this because they make a noise. The single cylinder, I think they're single cylinder engines. When you hear the motor pass, go pong 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 pong. Hence the name. We're 
you're just saying it smells nice. Fresh cut wood, love it, love it. And a slight hint of epoxy or something, probably not epoxy, I don't know what it is. So it's called Pong Pong. These kids are great, we're just following them around and they're taking us to all the sites. We've just seen a pom pom, as we know what they're called now, the long tail boats on one side. And we're now going to go to the school, which uh, even without Google Translate, we worked out that scholar or a scholar, I'll check it later, um, is very clearly school. So this I know is new because I've checked Google uh, Earth on satellite images. And on the satellite images, this is just a great big uh, space. So they've raised down the trees here to make way for the school. So I think this is relatively new and they're obviously very proud of it because they've been racing around this pathway to get us here so we can find, uh, go and have a look at their new school. What is this, Wayne Rooney? What is this? this. Straw, strawberry? Strawberry. 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 So I think this, uh, I was told this is books, books. So we've got um, a little case here with some books and magazines and pamphlets and things over here and another one over there in the corner. And it's other, other than that, it's completely just plain white floor. It all looks quite new. Um, so I think this is great. They're obviously investing quite a bit of money in education here, which is marvellous. And you said in the other building they had a big atlas? Or? Yeah, in the other building here, which is uh, also quite new compared to what... Uh, there was a big, big picture taking up the whole of one wall of the world. And then on the other, on the other opposite corner, there was one just of Asia, almost the same size. This is old, it's falling apart, there's holes in the roof. Generator, by the way, let's see. Yeah. Well, we found the football pitch which is behind me. It's a little bit overgrown though. It's probably a bit too hot to play football. So why not dry your hide out instead? I was born at morning on the first day of June 1900 and something in two. My mom was a sweetheart. My father was too. As we've been walking through the village with our entourage, I've been trying the few words that I know in Bahasa, but mainly using my phone, to find out if they had fish, no, if they had anything else, no, if there was a shop, no, and if we could get a coffee, no. Anyway, this is the shop, and apparently they're going to do us a coffee, which is brilliant. Hello, hello. So this is coffee. Inside the shop. This is the grocery store which sell basics and San and Ha uh, who are sitting over here, San is by the window and he is a teacher at the nursery school or uh, the primary school that we went to visit and this is Ha and Ha is the proprietor of the shop and he's very kindly rather than just sell us the sachet of coffee and a tea he's actually made us tea and coffee because we were a little bit dehydrated and of course we have the usual entourage of the boys <laughs> as well who are watching our every move so we say Dermakasi thank you very much thank you and this is my name is Fajar 
<laughs> Did you get that? Yeah. His name is Badger. Not Wayne Rooney. No, not Wayne Rooney. You have Rooney on your back. On here? Rooney. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, can you explain what that is? What, a chunky tree? Yeah, a chunky tree is a clove tree and there are a few of them around here and some of, the, some of the guys farm them and they're very, very intense because you have to pick tiny, tiny buds and then you have to, it takes six months for them to dry them into the things that we see as cloves in the supermarket. That's a tree there. So we're making our way back now. Uh, it's been a very interesting afternoon walking around with the boys, getting a little guided tour, meeting some of the local people and stopping off for a coffee as well. And in fact, San, who was the teacher, explained to us that uh, we're the first boat that they have seen in the village. So that's quite exciting and uh, quite possibly the first time that these boys have ever seen a drone and some big fat English tourist walking along talking to himself in front of the camera. <laughs> So that's the end of this week's episode, which was set in the rather beautiful little village of Ayaputi, it's called, which is white water in Indonesian. And um, now we've been waxing lyrical about the last few places we've visited, haven't we? Yeah. But I, I know that Liz just wanted to add a little something at the end of this video. Yes, I did. I just wanted to say that those children completely stole my heart. Um, in fact, the whole village did. They were so welcoming and so fresh and innocent and just delightful. Uh, Sen, actually, the school teacher, is Badger's father, and he told us quite a lot of stories which we weren't able to cover. Anyway, the children, they don't have any phones, no any any kind of um, electronic gadgets to play with they spend all their time outside running around in the trees helping parents helping um, the, the workers there and they were just full of joy 
and, they, and and full of knowledge as well, weren't they? They really yes. knew their stuff when it came to plants, machinery, yes. uh, just the you know the environment in which they lived. They were so switched on. They educated they? us. Yeah. They really did, and uh, they taught me the names of the trees and the fruits in their language, and they got me to identify trees. They'd point at them and say, "What's that?" So by the end of the day, I felt quite knowledgeable. Mm. And tearful. Yes, I did. I did have a little tear when I got back to the boat because I had enjoyed that day more than any other, I have to say. Yeah, quite special. Well, anyway, that's the end of the episode. And don't forget, if you enjoy watching our channel, then please hit that like button. And also, if you enjoyed this episode, then please do share it because it really helps us if you can share it across it your own social yes. media. So we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Now, this week... This week we are going to be putting that big question to our patrons, which is where are we going to go sailing next season? So that, by the time this goes live actually, we will have asked them. So if you want to get involved in that, then please do check out our Patreon page and be one of the uh, couple of hundred or so that's going to be voting on where we go next. <laughs> it's a big decision. <laughs> in the meantime, peace and fair winds. <laughs>